everybody, I just wanted to record something really, really quickly. I just finished up a lesson with student Paul, and he had a great question, great series of questions. First, some background on Paul. For the last 30 years, Paul has been in a top flight rock band out of San Diego, national, international touring success, but he has never been a solo chair. And now he would like to become a solo chair. So I had some questions and he asked me, what goes through my mind, my mind, my mind, right? When I'm playing a solo with a band and I thought, what a great question. And I think what we boiled that, the essence of that down to was, where do ideas for solos come from? Now, you know, a lot of us talk around that. We say, well, you know, you've got to learn scales and you've got to learn your chords and you have to be able to arpeggiate your chords. And, you know, and, you, and in, in fact, on this YouTube channel, in the past, I've talked about all the above, plus uh, learning um, the melody, basing your solo off of the melody of the song. Uh, and, and those are ideas that are valid, but still, they help you get around the horn, they help you move around the horn, but they don't really inform you. They don't really tell you where to start, how to start, what do you do? Well, we learn this by studying the masters, all artists, all disciplines. In fact, that's what they call the arts, disciplines, right? Everybody studies the man. Where you're a writer, you study other writers. You might even transcribe other writers. And we all know that if you're a painter, uh, you will sit in front of, a, a, of an old master or a painter and replicate that painting and learn how to solve the problems of paint, light, perspective, color, all those kinds of things that we study as, as apprentices. We study the old masters, be they writers, painters, sculptors, or saxophone players, right? So that's what we boiled it down to today, and I realized that the correct answer for Paul was, is, and for you too, those of you who are wondering, what, how do you actually come up with ideas to play a solo? Now, again, uh, backtracking just a little bit here, I'm a rock and roll, rhythm and blues, funk, soul, uh, sax player. I can play jazz and I teach jazz, but my heart lies in the blues and in rock and that sort of music. So that's the kind of stuff that I'm going to talk about today. I'm going to talk about uh, sourcing that material. Uh, and what I have done and what I explained to Paul was, I have collected over the years hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds of, of riffs. Uh, from other sax players or trumpet players or singers or guitarists. And this goes all the way back to when I was a little kid uh, and first starting the saxophone. I must have been 10 years old. By the time I was 11 years old, uh, I was playing in a rock band. A uh, couple guys at my elementary school here in San Diego learned how to play uh, a, a, a Surfaris song that was a big hit on the radio back then. This kind of dates me. The dogs. Thank you, dogs. Thank you. Anyway, they're hanging out in the studio here with me. The, uh, the song was called Wipeout, and basically we were able to play that song. <laughs> Big business with the dogs. We were able to play that song because the drummer could play the solo, right? Listen to it, and you'll get an idea of what that's all about. Anyway, um, hey guys, give it a rest. We're okay here. We're safe. They'll be right back. Anyway, the... Uh, I remember I started learning to play solos quite inadvertently. I didn't really know from saxophones. I didn't know other saxophone players. And I grew up in the age of this wonderful explosion of rock and roll, uh, pretty much coming out of, uh, of California, surf rock, and then uh, the San Francisco scene. And I remember hearing a band called uh, the Jefferson Airplane. And there was a song on the radio called uh, that you want somebody to love, right? And the guitar solo at the end of that, the guitar solo at the end of that, uh, Yorma Kokkonen, just sounded like this cat howling in, a, in an alley. And it was such a perfect and wonderful song that I actually had to, right? Had to. There was no want to. I couldn't sleep until I learned that solo. My friend had a guitar. His name is Stan. Stan had a guitar. And I tried to play it on the guitar. 
bad bad idea for somebody with uh, you know little little fingers, little soft dainty fingers. But I did have an alto saxophone. I could not play the guitar to save my life, but I could play it on the alto saxophone. So I learned how to play that solo on my saxophone because I had to. I had to be part of that music. Had to be in me, not just hearing it, but it had to come out of me. Then the next uh, thing that I heard was. Um, let me think about it. Creedence Clearwater Revival. And who was the guy that sings in that band? Amazing, amazing band. Absolutely amazing band. And that voice, that voice in Creedence, uh, singing those amazing, you know, Born in a Bio. Uh, uh, John Fogarty, that's the guy's name. And I had, to, I had to, again, had to. It wasn't an option. I had to copy that. And I'd better by this point than to pick up a guitar. So I picked up the alto sax. And once again, you know, I figured out how, how do you get that, that gravelly sound, that growl, that just growl into the, you know, so I, I started to kind of hum into the saxophone and, and sort of got it. Right, so that was the beginning. <laughs> Beautiful, wasn't it? So anyway, that was the beginning of... Of of and I of, of of learning from the masters, right? Copying other you, you know solos or other singers or sounds or whatever, and incorporating all of that stuff into the you know the intellectual hopper, such as it is, and that is what over the years informs my solo playing, learning a riff or learning a lick from another sax player, or like I said, or a guitar player. Most of what I learned came from guitar players. Right, uh, and so, uh, but but then again, you know, when I started to you know get into the form and listen to other sax players like King Curtis, that's a that's a King Curtis lick that I've kind of modified over the years and I use over and over and over. Uh, that came from Lenny Pickett, um, Saturday Night Live show tenor sax guy, uh, more or less. And again, those are, those are the kinds of things I would have learned and picked up because I thought they sounded pretty good. And then, you know, you learn them in, in all the, the different keys. I mean, there are four keys that are really practical for uh, blues, rock, funk, soul, sax players, R&B sax players. But, you know, learn them in all 12 if you can, because it helps you to move around the horn, all right? I learned, uh, I picked up, uh, you know, just, just bits and pieces from uh, King Curtis and from uh, Junior Walker and from uh, 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 Lenny Pickett and I'm thinking from Hank Mobley. Uh, just, just amazing players out there that you can study from. Uh, and all you got to do is dial them up on YouTube. So that's what I'm going to send you home to do today. All right, that's your assignment. If you haven't done this already, start listening. And I don't care, like I said, who you listen to. I don't care if it's a trumpet player, a guitar player, a piano singer, anything like that. Listen and start collecting riffs, okay? Start collecting licks and riffs from each of these players and eventually you'll have a lot of ideas saved up in your head and practice them and practice them run practice running them in different keys this is where ideas for solos come from uh, is it is this theft no it's not theft we're, we're borrowing an idea of course and then we're going to modify it and then we're going to you know play it in different keys and we're going to fit it into our solos uh, somehow now here's another odd thing about that you know, fitting them into the solos doesn't necessarily happen because, you know, a lot of times when you stand up to play a solo, you're not necessarily conscious of all the things that you know or you're trying to do, which is totally normal, right? What happens is these things find their way into your solos quite by accident, or they'll inform other ideas that uh, will pop up into your solos. So anyway, that's the, that's the, that's the whole idea uh, about where ideas for solos come from. Other players, other musicians, other people, other songs, right? They all add up to informing you and your musicality and your sense of composition as you move forward into uh, becoming 
uh, a stronger, better, or the soloist that you envision yourself to be, okay? So that's what I got for today. Hope this helped. If you have any questions, email is always the best way to find me. Here it is, Dave Good Sachs, all one word, Dave Good Sachs at gmail.com. Talk to you again.